I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and welcome to Synthropole Attempt 3. <laughs> Today we are going to dye 200 grams of Knit Picks Dishy Yarn. This yarn is 100% cotton and we are going to dye it with some Tulip One Step Tie Dye. Now, this time we know we will have something that will bleed. And so we are going to do a comparison, both in terms of how quickly can we rinse the yarn to clear, but also we'll see if we can maintain some of this pure white, <laughs> but we'll see how much back staining maybe we get because we'll dye these two the same way. We will wash one of them with dish soap and one with synthropole. And this won't necessarily be the end of the story. Maybe using professional fiber reactive dyes, we can get something a little more extreme, but I do know that we will see bleeding here. And so it is as good of a shot as we've had thus far to do this comparison. Since the One Step Tie Dye has everything we need in it to dye the yarn, I am going to pre-soak in plain tap water. Now you might notice here that I've got yarn for a few different videos and this is because although you can use old mixed dissolved tulip tie dye it is best to and most effective to use it as close to when you mix it as possible. So I want to have plenty of yarn ready to go uh, to use up all of the dye that we are going to be playing with. Anyway I am pressing on the fiber to try to squeeze out as much of the air as possible. And I'm gonna let this soak overnight. Do I want to speckle on the powder and then set? Or do I want to dissolve this tie-dye powder in liquid, apply it, and then set that? It's sort of a question of which circumstance will leave more white behind. <laughs> so that way there is some white that we could stain. And I think that I am inclined to deal with the powder uh, and do powder fairly heavy but leave like one section with no dye. And the reason why I think I'm inclined to do that is that the powders will spread on the yarn. That is something that I have seen today. Like you can't really speckle with it. Uh, I mean you can get small patches of color but not really speckles it does sort of bloom and spread even when heat setting yeah i'm trying to think that what will lead to having some pigmented color but we can sort of guarantee that there's white left that we could try to preserve and so i think that if i do this there could be we can keep a section white and then we can have some other areas that are mostly we can have some other areas that are mostly or mostly colored but have some white patches so we can see if we get back staining in that area as well. So I think that that is what I want to attempt for this, uh, which maybe I'll regret, but I haven't washed this yet, but there's a multicolored one that I sort of speckled on really heavily and I definitely see undyed regions in there. So there's a shot and if there's a shot, well, we'll see. Today I have filmed two different videos using three colors of Tulip One Step Tie Dye. Uh, black, purple, and teal. And these are the three colors that we will use today for this dish soap versus synthropole cotton edition. Now these colors do strike slower and I believe that I have seen backwash, backwash, <laughs> back staining with them in the past. But I have a big debate about this, an internal debate. We're gonna deal with dry powder and I do have a yarn mop here, uh, should I need that. Now I have laid out some plastic wrap here and I am gonna be using this to preserve and protect some areas. Uh, not the whole thing, and actually I'm gonna move this further down but I want to keep some amount of this there, protected. Uh, and I have this rolled up and then I am going to 
We don't need the rest of the plastic wrap, but I'm going to wrap this sort of around uh, to sort of hold that and preserve this. And then we will focus on adding powder heavily and funly to this other area. Since we are dealing with dry powder and not liquid, if we place this on top of it in the steamer basket, there's going to be some amount of white preserved in there. Now, I am going to go put on my respirator mask, safety glasses, and gloves, and we'll open up these containers with our tulip one-step tie-dye so we can speckle the yarn. And by speckle, I definitely mean heavily splotch. Now, the thing that I don't know how to deal with uh, is how we're actually going to do the washing. Because at some point, I'm going to want to soak it with the scissor pole. But we have some amount of rinses that we need to do before we're ready to start soaking the fiber. Because I would never just immediately start soaking. So I think that what we should do, hmm, I think that what I will do is for the initial rinse, I'll add synthropole or dish soap just in to start with, and then we'll proceed. I'm not sure what the best way is to deal with this. So if you have any suggestions for a future attempt, please let me know down in the comments below. Now there is no way for me to accurately get the exact same amount of dye on both. But since at this stage, I don't know which skein is going to be washed with which method, uh, I think that it is going to be okay. So, okay, let's wipe my fingers on our little mop and let's flip ish so we can add more color. You can see we got a fair amount of color in here already. I do want my fingers dry before going back into the powder. Now the black does break like orange and yellow. And I have to remember that I do want to go a little heavier on here than I think I do because we want there to be a lot of dye to rinse out. That is a goal. Well, why am I going along the same line? I want to go, I want to cross. So for all like, it's okay if we have white left in here. It's okay if we have no white left in this unprotected zone. <laughs> zone. But I'm pretty close to being satisfied. Yeah, I think that what I want to do now is, well, our yarn mop that had, was originally yarn that I dyed with Kool-Aid, that we also need to steam set. So I'll steam set that in one of my steamer baskets and I'm gonna steam set this in the other. So I'm gonna go and carefully transfer this over and then I'll bring the camera before we turn everything on. Uh, and I guess we will use the yarn mop to wipe up leftover from the counter. But I will be right back. Some of this dye takes a while to absorb. I am absolutely going to want to over dye this mop again, but I figured this can yarn can become a tie dye mop. And we can layer color and layer color and layer color and over many videos and see where we end up. Uh, I find that this tie-dye powder is really fine. And so it yeah, it just 
It stresses me out. Okay, I'm gonna stick this in a steamer basket. We'll clean up the counter, but I'll bring you over to the stove in just a moment. We can see some spread in here already, but with this sort of sitting on top, there's an area that like, in some of it, some color could go in. I believe that we will have white preserved. So I am gonna go ahead and steam set this for 40 minutes. And with this mop that I've used over a couple videos now, steam setting it now means that uh, in the future, if I layer on more color, the color will sort of layer versus blending on the yarn, which I think is really, really fun. All right, I am going to turn off the heat. Uh, we are done steaming. I see a little bit of spread that might be on the yeah, that might be on the exterior of the plastic wrap there. Um, I am going to leave it, I think, here in the pot to cool. Uh, and once it's cool, then we'll go wash it. As for the yarn mop, I'm wondering if we can get it so we stop seeing any Kool-Aid bleeding on here. Um, I'm also gonna let this cool completely. When I went and soaked this to just get it wet so that way I could use it as a yarn mop, I did see some more Kool-Aid come out. So maybe our center pole will help with that. So we'll go ahead and wash this with it uh, as well. Again, when everything is nice and cool. But we will wash them separately. All right, the yarn is um, mostly cool. And we just are gonna to wanna to take one of them over to the stove. But I do want to unravel this and just show we've got a large section of white. And so let's grab the one with the light zip tie. Ooh, this is pretty. This is really pretty and go wash it. This is really pretty. Okay, I am gonna add. Uh, that was not the tiniest amount of synthropole. And now I'm gonna add in the deepest area. And we'll just have a little bit for this initial rinse. Um, a little bit of the rest in there. Uh, I mean, I suppose we have the, you know what? We're going for it. We have the synthropole in here. We're trying to figure out how much back staining this will prevent, uh-oh, see that? Got some color transfer from touching. We're gonna make the water warm. Let's see if that is gonna stay. It might. Just from touching. Okay, but we do still have some purple in here. I will add some more. We're just gonna try to keep it in the water as much as we can the whole time. And then, ooh, ooh, I see, ah, that's pretty white. Okay, we'll see if this stuff does the same. I guess it looks like we're seeing a little bit of color transfer onto the white also, because uh, if it picks up some of that colored liquid that we are seeing in there. So now, as I add more, grabbing what is on the outside of the bottle, I am going to want to do a soak. And uh, see, what's hard for me is that we've got bleeding here. I want to test things. So there's a big part of me that's like, ooh, let's uh, leave it in now and see what happens. But the other part of me wants to give it a shot of succeeding. So, and I mean, it's looking really good right now. So here's what, okay, this time, again, we've got some, so a tiny bit more in there. And I'm now this time gonna fill up the basin with soap. And we still have some bleeding. Uh, we still have some going on. The water is warm. Oof, this color is so fun. It is so, so, so much fun. I am really excited. All right, we have everything free floating in here. There is a little bleeding, it is light. I did not count how many times I rinsed this before we let it in. But for my reference, I would say it's a lavender at the point where we're gonna just leave it in to soak, hoping that 
uh, we can soak out that water. So I'm going to leave it for 15 minutes and then we'll come back. All right, during the soaking time, I did come and move it uh, a couple of times just to like help distribute. And if we're getting back staining, it is minimal. I think I probably, I hope I still have one skein of the white dishy cotton from Knit Picks so that way I could uh, see. I mean, there is a little bit of something from where it is touched. There might be a hint of blue in there. But of course we will be able to compare this to the other skein of this colorway. But here's what I found. And you have watched me struggle over watching washing cotton dyed in videos over and over and over again. And the soap with the synthropole got us to here. Which we'll see if just a soak with dish soap does the same thing. But this is incredible. <laughs> um, this is incredible. Uh, you know, there's no, I don't have any more synthropole in here, but this like is some of the fastest washing of tie-dye things that I think I have ever had. Now, it's possible that there's just not that much dye present in this yarn. Um, and so that is a very real possibility. And uh, that is something to consider. But if we need to try this again, we will try this again. So I am gonna rinse this one maybe just one last time. There's no dye left in here. I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry. And then uh, we will come and wash the other skein. I think we got a little bit of some speckled transfer while we were waiting, but oh right, I want to add some. We're using this seventh generation dish soap this time. The first wash, again, I am going to do just, let's squeeze that out. I'm going to do that first wash with just like without putting the white in because honestly that's what I would do. Editing Rebecca here. This is the moment where I messed up. This is the moment where I did something different that ruins any ability to have results and proper conclusions. I'll talk more as we go towards the end, but this is the reason why when you keep a lab notebook, you write things down as you go. You don't count on your memory to remember what you just did five minutes before. <laughs> so this is where I ruined the experiment. Let's carry on. And then the nice healthy squirt of dish soap here in the water. We will move the zip tie and start washing. I am using warm water. I now, of course, can't remember if that's what I did with the centerpole, but the main thing that you can see from here is look at the suds thing. That is very, very different right away. And I believe that I got the water to more of a lavender before we uh, left it in to soak. And so I am, ooh, I don't know if, uh, oh, interesting. I don't know if I had them not touching that soon. Okay, it could just be some water in there because I was like, this time there might be some purplization of that white end. So, interesting. Some soap. So normally if I would wash, I wouldn't add soap in the very, very first rinse. One thing we're going to have to consider when we're comparing the yarn to itself is I'm going to have to, oof, is just if, how much the white was touching the rest of the yarn. Now, this water is soapy and like no longer hot, just a little bit warm. And of course we cannot see what's happening in here. 
because of all of the suds. But I think that we're at, yeah, it looks like we're at that lavender stage. So now, there we go. Under all those suds, you can see we are at a similar stage right now. I am going to leave this to soak for 15 minutes. Okay, like before, I uh, came and moved it a few times, and I mean, it's looking, the whites are looking fairly white to me. So, the next part of this test, and I will add that the other skein out of the spin dryer, and cotton does this. This looks really, like, beautifully saturated. It is going to be way, way, way less vibrant, way more pastel when, when it dries. And that is really just a reality of cotton and something that, like, I'm so excited with how deep these colors are, but then it's not as much. Uh, Alright, so it looks like that they both rinsed to nearly clear really, really easily. And it doesn't look like I come back staining on either case. I was so sure. Uh, I was so sure. I mean, you saw that we had like significant amount of color coming out, but it's stopping faster than what I am used to. Well, we'll see. We don't know if this one is stopping faster. So maybe the difference is well, that turquoise color that sometimes I use, today we use teal nut turquoise. That color might be a big bleeder. Um, but I think that otherwise, like, maybe because I didn't use very much dye, or maybe really just let things soak for a bit, and we didn't see back staining. And back staining is something I always worried about. So if I'm going to let it soak, soak with some soap, whether it's center pole or not. So... From this end of things, from the end of someone who's washing right now, I have to say that they feel equivalent to me. Um, and so I don't have an official recommendation that, okay, you go have to go out and buy some purple. Now, the big difference is that being a low foaming soap, I think if you're dyeing something that I mean, I'm squeezing this and I'm agitating it a lot to wash it. I think that if you're dealing with something that is feltable and you want a low foaming soap, then the center pole is probably the way to go. But I haven't seen, the main difference is the amount of foaming. But once again, it's clear. So I am going to go ahead and um, rinse this just probably like one last time, and then I'm gonna put it through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and we'll have final conclusions. We'll take a look at that final color, but I'm, well, I'm very happy that the washing hasn't been so bad. That is not something I was expecting. I was dreading this, but we have one more skein to wash. For reference, I just removed this from the spin dryer and it already looks less saturated than what I think it did just a few minutes ago. Finally, we have this <laughs> thing, this yarn mop, this Kool-Aid friend. And so notice how pink that is? That's that Kool-Aid, friends. That Kool-Aid that is in here that I rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and rinsed and rinsed. And rinsed. So, this time, it's already stained. I'm not that worried about back staining. I am just going to leave this in here with that center pole to soak for 15 minutes. Okay, my camera battery might die. If it does, whoops. Uh, all right, I feel like our pale pink is getting paler. <laughs> that Kool-Aid color. Oh my goodness. I think I'm like the other ones. This one might not rinse. Uh, to clear because I don't think I rinsed the clear before. Yeah, see, we've got that Kool Aid still coming off. Still coming off. 
all mad. <laughs> uh, yeah, because that's, that's not even the color of any of the tie-dye. I feel like uh, I am going to rinse this a handful more times. I mean, the pink at least, I think that we've rinsed, successfully washed out a lot of that Kool-Aid. It does look a lot less pink, I think, than it did. But anyway, <laughs> I'm going to keep rinsing this. Uh, we'll see how it ends up. But actually, huh, not bad. Not bad. I mean, I think that's just Kool-Aid coming out. But yeah, I'll put it through the spin dryer. I'll rinse it some more, put it through the spin dryer. Then we'll hang it up to dry and come back for some conclusions. Here is the finished yarn. And there is a difference between the two, but there was also a flaw with my methods. I haven't edited the beginning of the video yet, but quickly going back, I see that when I was washing it with the centerpole, I did add the white end into the rinse bath uh, before doing one first rinse. And with the dish soap, I didn't. With the dish soap, I rinsed some dye out of the uh, dyed end first and then added everything into the pan. Editing Rebecca here. Oh good, I wasn't sure I remembered that for when I went to film the conclusions. <laughs> and that, my friends, may, may be the reason why we see some back staining with the center pole and not wish with the dish soap. With the center pole, I see the barest hint of a baby blue. And with that, with the dish soap, it is more white. And even if I change their position, that color is there. It's not an artifact. Uh, it is just an extremely subtle difference between the two skeins. Of course, it is also possible that the dish soap did a better job at preventing backstaining. Ultimately though, I really do think that it's the fact that I put the white end into the bath with that very first rinse. I think that that is where the difference was really made today. So now where do we go from here? What does this leave us with for our conclusions? Well, one positive from this experience and the side-by-side -side washing is that I did not feel a significant difference in the length of time that it took to wash the yarn if I used Synthropole or if I didn't. The big perks of the Synthropole seem to be that it's a low foaming soap, which can help when it comes to damage and felting if you're dealing with non superwash yarn, especially. And there are some fibers that are a little more sensitive to pH, and so there could be benefits there as well. When it comes to something like cotton that is machine washable, typically, uh, it may not make as big of a difference. So I am not really sure what my conclusions are. So let's just look at this beautiful, soft watercolor variegated effect we got with the Tulip One Step tie dye. In a video I filmed recently, I found that this dye doesn't really do well for doing sharp speckles on cotton, like I've seen with Jacquard Eye Dye or Rit Dye Powder. I have not yet tried speckling with Fiber reactive dyes, that's something that is still on the list. But the tie dye is great for giving medium saturation uh, and a really fun effect. And so I think that if you have a tie dye kit that's left over from doing projects with the kids or something like that, it can be a fun option. But if you want more vibrant colors, I absolutely recommend that you go for uh, fiber reactive dyes directly because I think that you should be able to get something that is much more pigmented than what we got here. I don't remember if I've mentioned it in this video. I do want to refer to my heat versus time versus vinegar video with using these tie dye kits where I found that steaming for 30 minutes Oh goodness, I think it was 30 minutes, was pretty equivalent to letting the dye sit on the fiber for 24 hours. And doing both the steam and then waiting 24 hours didn't really add much more in terms of color payoff. So ultimately, I think that these one-step tie-dye kits aren't that pigmented overall. They don't give you the brightest colors overall, but I mean, I still love them and I enjoy playing with them. These two skeins are very, very similar, but you can unquestionably tell 
that there's a difference in the whites. And so if you were to knit with both of these skeins in one project, you probably would notice a shift in that color when you switch from one skein to another. So if you were going to use both, I recommend blending them together a bit so that way it's not quite as obvious that there is a, I mean, they were dyed the same way, but there, it is like it's a dye lot difference. Also, I did want to pop in and just show the yarn mop. Uh, we do have a lot less Kool-Aid in here than I thought we did before. So I will continue to use this as a mop for other fiber reactive dye type projects. And so we'll see where it ends up in future videos. I have a feeling that moving forward, I'll probably use a combination of synthropol and or dish soap, depending on what suits me. I haven't edited the footage yet, so it's possible that my recollections are a little bit different, but I did not notice a extreme, okay, the synthropol made this process that much easier. I think the thing that did make the washing that much easier was letting things soak with the soap for periods of time. But at the same time, there wasn't that much dye here. So this wasn't a rinsing forever and ever and ever that I have experienced in the past. And it also is possible that it has to do with the pigments that are in there. I feel like using the color turquoise may have been some of the situations where I've had the most bleeding and washing, which I think is something that is indicative of that color in fiber reactive dyes. So that could have something to do with it when all of a sudden I'm like, I cannot rinse this to clear for anything. If you have had a definitive result using Synthropole versus dish soap, please share it down below. Uh, I'm really curious to hear what you think, if there's one you prefer and why. Ultimately, I think it can come down to personal preference. And I mean, that's the case with a lot of art. <laughs> Different techniques and how you choose to do things are what you prefer and what you enjoy. And so it doesn't matter if it's the same as what my preferences are, as long as you are uh, being safe, of course. <laughs> Please always be safe when you are dying yarn. But some of these other little nuanced things really can come down to personal preference. I hope that this series of trying to compare these soaps has been useful and helpful in that it can maybe make a difference, but I think the bigger thing that's more important than which soap you choose is if you have a white section on a variegated yarn and you're seeing color bleeding, keep it out of the color bleeding. I think that that just makes a lot of sense. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you love the yarn I dye and want to support the content here at the same time, go and check out my Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations. The shop is filled with hundreds of skeins of hand-dyed yarn, and it's a great win-win for getting some fun, pretty hand-dyed yarn and supporting the content here on the channel at the same time. I don't know why fiber reactive dyes make me a little more nervous. I think in general, I don't like washing yarn. It's my least favorite step of the filming process, but one I feel it's important to show because if something's bleeding, I want to address it and share how I troubleshoot it. So I think that it is a really important part, even though it is my least favorite part of the dyeing process, I think, overall. <laughs> so I'm sure some of my hesitation with playing with my fiber reactive dyes more comes from just knowing that with tie dye and stuff that you just have to wash it so much. So I think that's where some of those reservations come from. But I also remember that the payoff from the colors is so much greater that I really need to go and do it and play. Anyway, if you want to see all the different ways that I have dyed cotton yarn, I do have a playlist that is just focused on cellulose fibers. Some of them are side by side with wools, but it does show what does and doesn't work well on these plant-based fibers, which I think can be really useful. Thank you so much for watching.